Talk to us about this experiment. How are you? It's the first time that humans are involved in this experiment, of course. It so is. how are you actually conducting it? Well, we have a climate chamber at the University of Sydney in the new Susan Wakel Health Building. And in that chamber, we can simulate heat waves, both of the past, but also of the future. Mm. So what we're looking at are critical temperatures and humidities and exposing human participants under carefully uh, medical supervision, of course, mm. to see which conditions people can re reach or experience without um, experiencing very high core temperatures that could be deadly. Mm. All right. Before we get to the impacts of what heat can do to the body, mm. my oh &S hat on, I'm concerned about the safety <laughs> yeah. of these participants. How are yeah. you ensuring that they remain safe in this? Well, of course, we have full ethics approval for this particular <laughs> study and um, we have lots of safety um, uh, procedures in place. We have a careful screening procedure, so we have lots of criteria that we exclude people that could be right. particularly vulnerable, but we also m monitor vital signs, so core temperature, heart rate, we look at the pH of the blood, and we have very uh, clear cutoffs that are very um, safe and conservative to ensure mm -hmm. that participants are going to be safe throughout the particular study. Mm -hmm. Do they get a suntan along with it or no? It's no, they don't get a, <laughs> they don't get a sun, sun tan uh, because they're indoors actually. Yeah. Um, but what we do is actually put them through a seven day heat acclimation procedure. Right. So for oh. the seven days before they come in to do the actual trials, we condition them to the heat for seven consecutive days. And in that case, they um, have the heat adaptations that actually make it safer for them, but also gives them a bit of a benefit if they're playing sport or something. Right. Um, so talk to us, how, what actually happens in the body as mm. heat increases? Right, so when we're um, at rest, like right now, our body temperatures are around about 37 degrees Celsius, and we can tolerate increases in body temperature by about two or even three degrees Celsius relatively safely. Um, we have physiological processes that help defend body temperature, so we modify our circulation, we increase our sweating, but the problem becomes when those processes are not sufficient to keep our body temperature within a safe range. Mm -hmm. and then when core temperature reaches something like 40 degrees Celsius or maybe even 41 degrees Celsius, this is when it can become quite problematic mm. so we can have experiencing um, we can experience heat exhaustion or even in very severe cases heat stroke which is a medical emergency do people have different tolerance levels when it comes yeah. to heat certainly so what we know from the physiological literature is that the elderly for example so older adults over the age of 75 in particular mm. have reductions in the ability to sweat so they generally tend to be more vulnerable to mm. the heat um, we also see that there's increased vulnerability with the presence of chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease, um, obesity, um, kidney disease. And when aging and those chronic diseases are combined, that's where there's real vulnerability. And if that, those people are then in low resource settings where they don't have access to things like air conditioning, that's where uh, the vulnerability is peaked, if you will. Mm. I do wonder whether um, as we acclimatize to yeah. hotter weather, I suppose, um, does it get to a point where we will just have to adapt to the higher temperatures and our bodies do well with part of the human evolution yeah so there's a limitation to um uh physiological adaptation to the heat we understand those proce processes quite clearly through the science that's been done to date mm. but ultimately our ability to tolerate the heat is limited by physics as well and so um there are there are concrete limits to which uh, people will no longer be able to maintain safe body temperatures um, moving forward. And what this study is going to do is identify what those true thresholds are, but actually understand them in, in human participants for the first time. And then we're going to work alongside climate scientists to understand when these critical temperature and humidity combinations are going to occur in the future with climate change. Mm. And what we're hypothesizing at the moment actually is that the upper limits of the human survivability with heat stress are actually cooler and drier than we previously thought, mm. which actually is, is, is quite confronting from the perspective of understanding how our decisions today with respect to carbon emissions and future climate change, mm. how that is actually going to imperil human survivability it's moving fascinating. forward. It's fascinating. And how might that also inform the changes that we make? We have to make as a society in yeah. terms of our housing and, and our yeah. food and things like that? Absolutely. So we've talked about the ability to physiologically adapt. So yeah. once that is spent, um, and also when we're thinking about the more vulnerable 
uh, people in society. Mm. We need to think about other ways. So changing our infrastructure, thinking about the ways in which our cities are planned, uh, thinking about green and blue infrastructure, so um, trees and, and parks and water bodies to keep the temperatures and humidities down, but also thinking about the built environment as well. So um, making sure that the, the materials that uh, houses are constructed of are, are fit for purpose when we're uh, facing a warming climate.